All right, to start off the retouching section, we are going to take a look at the spot healing brush tool. That is probably the easiest tool to use with regards to retouching and is probably the most powerful tool to use. Now, the thing I want to let you know first and foremost when you're doing retouching is you always want to retouch in at least 100% view. I tend to retouch higher than that but you want to at least be in 100% view. If you are not, you are not seeing every pixel, so you're not seeing accurate results of your retouching. Take a look in the tab of my file here. You see it's spot healing brush the rocks.jpg. Notice it says at 33 and a third percent. That means right now, in the Photoshop window, I am seeing the image reduced down to 33 and a third percent of its actual size. So I am not seeing every pixel of the file. In order to see every pixel of the file, I need to zoom in to at least a hundred percent. So I'm going to command plus once, twice, three times, and now you'll see up there in the tab it says 100%. Now I am seeing every pixel in the image. If I zoom up higher, that's fine, but if I am lower than 100%, I am not seeing every pixel. So back to 100%, now we're ready to start doing some work. Also, I'm going to scroll up here and what we're going to do is we're going to use the spot healing brush tool to remove some of these rocks. The spot healing brush tool works like a brush. So if I right click with the spot healing brush tool, you'll see I have some brush controls. With the spot healing brush tool, in most of your situations, you are going to want to be working with a hardness at 100%. I also recommend that if your spacing is at the default 25%, you dial that down to one. I'm gonna hit the return key closing that, and you'll notice that I have a spot healing brush tool that's not really big. It's about the same size as that little rock right there in this ocean area or the coast area here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to click and drag and I get this black stroke. It's like a paint stroke over that area. But when I lift up, notice what Photoshop does. It's like magic. So I can use this spot healing brush tool in most of the areas that I want to get rid of in this particular situation. I'll do some more. Take a look down here, click and drag. It gets rid of that. Here's a big one, so I'll click and drag like that. Magic, it just goes away. Now, if you're using this, you might find there will be situations that it doesn't work right because what Photoshop is doing is trying to read the pixels around it take some inventory of what's going on and replace the pixels you're painting over with pixels it thinks you want. It doesn't work all the time because you'll see in later videos there are situations where Photoshop is picking pixels that you don't want and it causes problems. There are other tools you will see we will use in that situation. But right now, if you were to go through this, you're gonna see that most of the stuff here is pretty easy. Notice I'm not drawing big, long strokes. I'm just painting short little strokes. And I'm gonna get take a moment and fix this all up. You wanna be careful and look for duplicates, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And if it doesn't work right in a certain area, you're ending up with a, a small little dark spot you don't want, just go over it again. Now, if you've been doing this, you're probably going to think, hey, Steve, you're doing destructive editing. And oh my goodness, 
You are totally and completely correct. I am doing destructive editing. What if I did this and showed the client and the client says, hey, I like what you did, but I don't want all the rocks out. I want just a couple standing around her feet. Well, now you're in trouble because you changed the pixels. You physically changed the pixels. So the way to accomplish this without doing destructive editing is to do it on a separate layer. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to the file menu all the way down to revert, which will revert this file back to its original um, pixels because I haven't saved it yet. So I hit revert and you'll notice that now the rocks are back. This is the file I started with. Over in the layers palette, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to name this layer edits, or you can name it something else. Uh, you can name it uh, rocks, rock removal. I'll just do that, rock removal. Now I have this on a separate layer and I'm going to make the same changes I was showing you just a moment ago. But there is a problem. If I try to do that, I'll come up to this area right here and if I click and drag, you'll notice it doesn't go away. What the heck is going on? Well, what's going on is if you look in the layers palette, you'll notice that I am on a transparent layer and so on this transparent layer, I am painting, or I shouldn't say that, I, sh I am using this spot healing brush tool to paint over transparency and it's trying to replace transparency and what's it going to replace it with? Transparency. Nothing's happening because it's transparent pixels. So what I need to do is up in the options bar, you'll see this checkbox here that says sample all layers. I click on that. And now when I use the smart, or I'm sorry, the spot healing brush tool, it's going to read all the layers, sample them, make a decision about what you don't want and get rid of them. And you'll notice I'll just do a quick few right here. And you'll see that everything is happening just like it did before, except for one thing. Notice the rock removal layer. Notice the background layer when I turn off the eyeball of the rock removal layer. This is going to be very beneficial to you in several ways. One, obviously, as I said, it is non-destructive. There are some techniques that we can do with blending modes and opacity if we do this sort of editing on a separate layer, non-destructive. Go ahead and finish this out. It's kind of fun and I will show you the next in our retouching section.